is an exclusive interview for Coma Music Magazine. The show was absolutely phenomenal. Thank Let us you. <laughs> awesome. Um, love having you guys here. It's amazing. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. When you started out, you had some longer songs. Did you ever play any of those songs live, or do you prefer to keep the live set as right as possible? Um, yeah, that is one thing that um, progressed on different albums was that I liked playing live so much, and then I realized that a lot of the songs were about six to seven minutes long, yeah. and when you're a support act or an opening act, you only get a half hour set, so yeah. it's really hard to choose stuff. And I started actually pressing or editing the songs down and then that's how my songwriting structure changed over time too. I really tightened it up to say, you don't need to, I don't need to go on and on, I just want to write a song that's, which is kind of falls under what pop structure is, like, yeah. you know, for radio purposes, you know, stuff usually stays under three and a half minutes. So that's, that's not really my goal, it's just, I like the, the tight structures personally. <laughs> awesome. So you stated in the past that you'd like to rework, um, to rework Selling Rebellion. It's been a few years now. Any plans to do just that? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> no. I, so, when I'm finished it all along, like, I, I, I know what, what, um, it's not, not regrets, but sometimes you're like, like being a kind of perfectionist, like, oh, yes. if I could have just tweaked that bass, I would have done that differently. Yeah. But sometimes you just have to let it go and things are in the past. To revisit. Yeah, I'm just so wrapped up in doing all the new stuff now that it doesn't really. It, it's really not something that I want to do right now is to go back and touch old stuff when I'm so Maybe focused when you on get the bored. new stuff. Yeah, I'm often <laughs> bored. I'm like sitting there, with nothing to do. <laughs> what, what can I do today? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, there's a perception that the whole goth industrial scene is dark and serious. What I found with people like you, Eric from um, Everything Goes Cold, Matt from Caustic, the Gossicals, and the entire Coma crew, is that many of us are goofy as hell as people. What do you think causes the perception in the first place, and do you think the way we actually are is a rebellion against the goth industrial scene stereotype, or simply who we truly are? Um, that's a good question. I don't really know where it stems from. It's this want to be dark and mysterious, and that's fine. And some days you have that kind of attitude and that, you know, that's what you want to present of yourself. But most of the people that you meet are the most laid back, down to earth people. And they just, most of the culture they're into is actually just, they like the stomp hard music, but yeah. they also love the um, underground humor and just really quirky. I think at part we're all a bunch of nerds. Yeah, we are. We're all a bunch yeah. of geeks and nerds. And we all come from that world that if you take yourself too seriously, like I, I just think that's kind of ridiculous. Like as it's completely as, ridiculous. Trust yeah, me, I yeah, understand. Yeah, yeah. It's okay, like <laughs> expressing yourself through just doing art. Express yourself, you know. Not all the time. No one's yeah. like that all the time. Let's talk about covers for a minute. You've covered both the Deftones and Pat Benatar, who are both outside the genre, and you went in completely different directions on those two. Which do you prefer, staying true to the original like you did with Change? We're really making your own and bringing it to our scene like you did with Invincible. I usually prefer to make it my own. Like when we we also covered um, Depeche Mode and we took slow songs and made them like more electro. Yeah, we like upped the t made it more like what area yeah. would do. Like still with passionate vocals. Change was just an experiment in let's do guitars and real. Drums because that yeah. <laughs> that was out of our realm and out of our comfort zone, but it ended up sounding a lot like the original, which not as good as the original. I can never do it full justice. And I love when you see comments and people are like, "It's not it's as good as the original," or, or, no, or yeah. good. Yeah, no, but people. Yeah. And I'm like, it doesn't have it's to be. Tribute. It's not a competition. It's like our we love this song, so this is our yeah. It's a tribute. It's not a direct yeah. copy. If it was a direct copy, then we just challenge yeah. you for plagiarism. And it's actually more pressure to do someone else's songs, right? Because exactly. there's just a lot more pressure to live It's always the original, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you've been with Alpha Matrix since you started Aria, and as most fans know, Alpha Matrix is big on remixes. What are your personal thoughts on remixes? Are they the perk of the genre, or would you rather do without them? Um, I think they serve their purpose, and they have a place, and it's actually a good bonding thing with a lot of artists, it's because true. we share each other's music, and get to collaborate through remixes. So that's like how I met a ton of bands is because I we talked about um, exchanging remixes or me doing guest vocals on a remix.
mix or something, but I personally, you know, I, I'm kind of <laughs> sick of it myself. Yeah, I don't understand. No, it, I like, they do serve a purpose, and I think it's always interesting to hear what other artists will do to a song of mine or my voice. And I always love hearing it, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's hard to, to collect totally all those three <laughs> yeah, some are, some are out there. <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. Understand. So, uh, you've spoken in the past about making more videos, but it now been, it now has been so long after Hearts for Bullets, I guess those tracks are probably out. Have you made any new connections for videos since? Might we expect any new videos when Plastic Makes Perfect is released? I would love to do more videos, but I don't think it's not as easy as it sounds. Like, even doing the My Device video, like that. Now it's, like, I still think it looks amazing, but even that's a little dated, and that, you know, we tried to keep, keep that under a budget, like, finding locations and someone that can do a good job of it, that you're not, like, just in your basement singing, uh, you know, like, singing on your mat. Oh, okay, that's my problem, is I don't have it's that, uh, It's industrial! Like, if you stick the, to the uh, old school, it's great if it's in your basement with $5. $5 video. Yes, okay. $5 video. That's not really what I'm going for right now, but uh, <laughs> you said rather, I don't know, I'd rather wait and put something called Highly out. produced, lots of pink. That would be great. Okay, yeah. we'll see. Completely understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is my last question for you. Um, 1,000 Transmissions is a very personal song being about your dad. Are there any other songs that have deep personal meaning to you? Oh yeah, like a lot, so many of them. To, I was doing a thing on my blog, the uh, um, song day sections, where I took a song every, it was, last summer it was pretty much every week, and I just kind of took it apart from like, what inspired it, what the influences were, and what I was thinking and feeling. And that's where I think like that 1000 Transmissions being with my dad came out, and then I, a lot of the other songs too, just the different emotions and things I go through. That's where I get my, my inspiration, it's all personal. A little bit of you goes into each song. Yes, I think it kind of is my expression. That it. makes CDs so much better than the artists just putting it out. You know, I need to pop the music out. I need to do this. Yeah. So we do appreciate that a lot because it shows that you put a lot of time in your music. Thanks. So awesome. Well, that's all the questions I have for you. Okay. So awesome. Thanks, guys. <laughs>